Today we had Lori Blythe on today, phenomenal agent. And it's one of those uh, things that she didn't really think about it for the longest time doing this in her career, but she was a registered nurse and then she transitioned into being a real estate agent. And it is phenomenal her story and how she ended up changing what she did and now is still helping people and uh she does she's certified in working with seniors and she allows them to help her uh increase her business and everything and found her niche that she does phenomenally well with so if you are looking uh for an agent or if you are looking for somebody to talk about real estate or you need to help somebody to transition as they're working in being a senior and everything and going to a smaller home or this is living she is the one you need to work with so give her a call and definitely listen to the rest of this thank you welcome to indy's real estate gurus your ultimate guide to the dynamic world of real estate in indiana and i'm rick ripma your hard-working mortgage guy and i've been in real estate and mortgages for over 24 years and i'm ian arnold a loan officer on rick's hard-working mortgage team and we are both with advisors mortgage group Together, we'll empower you with expert advice, market trends, and successful stories from guru realtors and local experts. Whether you're a homeowner, investor, or pro, join us as we navigate the thriving indie real estate market. Now, get ready to unlock the doors of success, one episode at a time. All right, so we have Lori Blythe here, and thank you for joining us and everything. And so let's get into a little bit about your past because I know now you're, bec you're becoming a seasoned guru uh, for real estate, but this wasn't your first career. No, no. I was a nurse prior to becoming a real estate agent. So I did that for over 20 years. I started out as a um, student in the emergency department at Wishard Hospital. And uh, after working there, I graduated and I worked at, in the intensive care unit in the trauma ICU, was working on my master's at that time, got my master's in nursing, and then I worked with a group of surgeons who did bariatric surgery, and I was at um, IU North for almost 10 years after that. So long time being a nurse and just decided that maybe I needed a change, but part of that change came because IU Health went through a budget crisis and there were several people that were let go given severance packages. I was one of those folks that, that got a severance package and had to find something different. So I bounced around different nursing jobs, didn't really find anything that was really hitting home. Um, got into uh, home health care and at that time going in and out of different restaurants to go to the bathroom actually <laughs> <laughs> I ran into who is now my current managing broker but uh, at the time we were acquaintances and she was like you know if you ever decide to change careers let me know and I was like you know I've been a nurse for so long I probably won't but I'll take your number and thank you and uh, so fast forward a few weeks later, I was in Hobby Lobby and I met up with, uh, I saw a former colleague of mine and she was a nurse and I, I hadn't seen her probably in 10 years or more and just making small talk and, you know, she was said, you know, how are you doing? What are you, you know, what are you doing these days? And I was telling her and so sh I asked her the same thing. She goes, you'll never believe what I'm doing. I'm doing real estate. And I was like, shut up, no way. And so um, that was like my second little like, hmm, what is this real estate thing about? And then fast forward again, a few weeks later, I was at the gym and early in the morning, like at 5 a.m. And I saw a, a friend of mine who I know very well and I knew she was a real estate agent, just encouraging her saying, you know, keep up the good work. And she then said to me, have you ever thought about going into real estate? And I was like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it's time to check out this real estate thing. And so I did. And that's kind of how, what led me to to real estate. So, All right. So I always like to ask this question. So yeah. everybody was out mis missing uh, you about, hey, real estate, real estate. Yeah. But what was, what was your thought process on real estate, what it was, compared to the reality check once you got into it? So, I mean, of course, everybody knows that as a real estate agent, you buy and sell houses. 
or help people buy and sell houses. I don't do that. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, So that was what I knew it to be. And it still is that realistically, but there's a lot of things that are behind the scenes that I wasn't aware of in terms of, you know, navigating and, and education and writing the offer in such a way that it can be a little competitive, but yet not cost the buyer as much money. And there's just ways to navigate that, that help the buyer in such a way that you wouldn't necessarily think of prior to that. Yeah. There, if you've never seen a sales contract, they are long and there's a lot of little print. So a lot of words, <laughs> <laughs> um, like when my wife and I went through it and uh, they, the realtor was like, oh, you can do this or you can do this. We can. Oh, yeah. you really like that? We can see if they'll just keep that in the house. So you know, I'm like, you, you can, can do, do that? all this. <laughs> this is new to me. So it is very interesting what you can and cannot do. And then yeah. it, it it seems like it's pretty broad open on what you can ask for as a buyer to a house and stuff. So, yeah. Yeah. I mean, things you may not want to necessarily put in the purchase agreement, but yep. maybe it can be negotiated afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> a little grayer, but yeah, we'll yeah. go with it. <laughs> so what is, uh, so I think the one thing that definitely helps you is your nursing background, just mm-hmm. because as I think a lot of real estate agents say, this is, you're more like a psychiatrist sometimes and therapy yeah. person. Yeah. So let's talk about that. So do you how how have you seen that help you? Well, it absolutely has helped me because when when you're a nurse, you have people who have a lot of emotions uh, at the bedside, and so you 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 quickly learn how to calm a room. And I think with real estate that that has come to play more often than I thought it would is calming a room and just calming emotions and just you know having a calm voice and talking to them just matter of factly um this is what's happening here or um this isn't a big deal this is something that happens sometimes and we just have to you know do x y and z to get over this hurdle and it'll be fine you know so just calming a room and just knowing how to manage those emotions has yes. helped it, it is a lot of emotions especially yeah. when it comes to housing i mean it's one of those things that we see it is you don't ever know when you're going to catch somebody. All right. Hey, they're having to sell a parent's home because yep. they passed or right. they have to, uh, older, uh, older people have to downsize to go to a, a ranch because of their living ability. Right. Uh, exactly. Or, hey, I just had a newborn. I need another bedroom. Yeah. <laughs> so, right. There is a lot. Yeah. So that's one reason why I got my seniors real estate specialist certification. Um, because I, have that nursing background, I can help with those emotions and things like that. But it just is a a place for me to give and still feel like that I'm helping people in a way more so than just buying or selling a house. Yeah. So let's get into that. So yeah. what is the senior certification? Yeah. What What does it what is it and how does it benefit them? So um, it, it just gives me a seniors real estate specialist has just a little more education, helping people to move to a safer environment, whether that be with their parent or with their uh, kids or with their maybe it's an assisted living facility. Maybe it's a nursing home. Maybe it's just a, a ranch with no stairs and their washer and dryer isn't in the basement, mm-hmm. you know, um, but maybe it's just helping navigate that and then also knowing that in my own family i have some family members with dementia and alzheimer's and so i can also help navigate that as well and i have a lot of resources not just from real estate but from my nursing background as well that can help them get things that they are needed yeah and I'm telling you this right now. We dealt with it through my family. If yeah. you haven't been through something like that, you don't know what it's like. Yeah. Uh, like, for instance, my grandfather and grandmother. My grandfather mentally was there. Mm-hmm. Physically, his body was deteriorating. But my grandma was the opposite. Her body, she was great. Yeah. But her mind, she had dementia. And she just was would just walk out of the house. not, And so it became a big issue. But then to have the conversations and try to be like, look, you have to move. Yeah. You, you have to go to assisted living. You can't live like this. Yeah. 
that was hard one on my parents which try and tell your parents sure. <laughs> and so you watch it and but i think with you having that background would definitely help to come in there and be the third party right so yeah i'm telling this right now if somebody's listening to this and you need that third party contact Lori. <laughs> <laughs> and why i just said that what's the best way somebody can get a hold of you so call or text is the best way to reach me 317-501-2298 you can also email me at Lori at the Stuart Home Group dot com dot com. And so Lori is spelled L O R I E. Yep, there you go. See, she knows how to spell her own name. Good job. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So you mentioned you're at the Stuart Home Group and yes. I know we've had several of you guys on there. So did you start with them or did you just jump uh, or did you find them later so uh, that's an interesting question that you asked me and uh, people don't believe me when I say this but I interviewed 47 agents and or brokers before I chose the Stewart home group and I came back to the Stewart home group three times and on the third visit I decided to go with them and I have not regretted it one bit it's the absolute best fit for me um, the, our managing broker Stephanie is um, amazing, um, and she will do anything for her agents, and it's been it's been great. Okay, so we've all interviewed for jobs. So what what made it stand out over the other forty? Yeah, what, what, what was the connection? What was how that? So work? well, I I didn't necessarily know what I wanted in an agency, but I knew what I didn't want, and so I was able to quickly cross people off my list when I heard certain things that I was like, okay, that's not for me. Um, I'm, I'm big on being fair. Uh, I'm big on uh, opportunity. I'm also, I can't stand when people nitpick or <laughs> talk bad about people mm -hmm. or backstab. And not that everybody else did that, but if I felt any sort of that, I was like, okay, this isn't for me. So I knew I knew quickly, and and I don't feel that at all. No, oh, that's awesome. Where I'm at. And that's one of those things that, as you get my wife and I have this concern. As you get older, it's not about the money. It's not that. It's about the environment mm -hmm. and wanting to go to work. Right. As soon as you don't want to go to work, there's issues. Yeah. And I think this over your long. I mean, you were in the nursing for so long, and mm -hmm. then you're jumping to this. You're like, look. I want something I'm gonna feel comfortable with. Right. And that's awesome that they were able to do that. Mm -hmm. So how have they mentored you? So Stephanie's great about having education and we have lunch and learns probably every other week. Um, we also have impromptu just meetings where, okay, there's a new document out, we need to learn about this or um, just something new that's in the industry that we need to know about. And she's really good about making sure that we have all of the resources at our fingertips yep so is there a certain when you got in and they're like hey here's one here's a words of wisdom is there anything that anybody gave you stephanie encouraged me to be myself and that's probably the best advice that she gave me is just be who i am and be real and true to myself and she's really good about uh, allowing us to brand ourselves, which I've done that. My logo, if you've ever seen it, it says Lori Blythe, the real estate nurse. And so people are like, what does that even mean? And it's because I didn't really want to lose my identity as a nurse. I wanted to keep that. But then I've kind of branched off into that. And so with the seniors real estate specialist certification, I also give back a lot to the community in the senior citizens arena and mostly in Morgan County because that's where I live but um, I'm I do a lot with the Mooresville Senior Center I'm now actually a board member there I also volunteer at a senior retreat in Martinsville which is an adult daycare for mostly dementia um, I s sponsor their live music once a month by uh, having um, somebody sing and play guitar to them, which is amazing. I volunteer doing crafts there once a month. I also do bingo for the Mooresville Senior Center. I also sponsor movies once a month in Mooresville at the Mooresville Cinema, 
where seniors can come for free to watch a movie. They just bring a canned good that goes to the mission. And um, yeah, so I just do a lot of giving back to the community. I feel very blessed that I've been given this opportunity to um, make an impact. And I've always wanted to volunteer as a nurse, but I really didn't have the means or the the time the time <laughs> to do it because 12 hour shifts yep. you know you just really don't get that opportunity but now that i do i thrive with that and i love it it just it truly it just feeds my soul that's that is awesome yeah. i mean and i like that you found your niche yeah uh, because there's a lot of agents out there even ones that have been out there for a while they don't really have their niche. Yeah. You found yours and you know, you've know you found out, all right, this is where I'm gonna go, yeah. this is where I'm gonna invest my time at. That's phenomenal. Yeah, I mean, it's not that I, I love, love, love first time home buyers. Um, they're amazing to work with because of the education piece mm -hmm. of it. But again, that comes back from my nursing. You know, I did a lot of education and, and it just kind of falls in there. But yeah, I really love the senior yeah. crowd. Well, it's a nice thing is sometimes, a niche can get the wrong uh, yeah. wrong thought process as as you were just saying is when i say niche some people are like well that's only who up no, no. <laughs> well, that, i might focal most of like 80 percent of my time there yeah because that's where my business comes from now but i'm also hey you want an investment property i know some you want yeah. you need a first-time home buyer let's go get you one yeah. let's go do this so sometimes a niche can get the bad thing but guess what you a niche yeah. is just my I, my main priority is here to a point, yeah. but then I'm still going to take care of other people too. Absolutely. So, uh, so I always like to ask some good questions. So oh let's put the real estate side apart. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about you. So if I take away your phone, you cannot work for 24 hours. What do we catch you doing for fun? I'll probably be exercising. I am a personal trainer uh, on the side too. I teach a fitness um, class spin. It's a stationary bicycle. Okay. And so I teach that twice a week. And then I also have a few clients in the morning that I train. Uh, so exercise probably would be the thing that I would do. But yeah, take my phone away from me and I probably would freak out. <laughs> <laughs> That's most people. <laughs> uh, most times I add to that, uh, after you get done and uh, having a heart attack on the ground and you stand up. <laughs> uh, but so what made you get in the spin, uh, spin classes and stuff? Well, I, I actually, I started out with a personal trainer and had that personal trainer for eight years before I got my own personal training certification. But just being in the gym and seeing, and, and somebody asked me to fill in one time, and I did, and I thought, well, this is kind of fun, so I just kind of went with it. Yeah, I think classes are the way to do it, because my wife was a personal trainer for a little while, yeah. and she got tired of people not showing up yeah. and all this stuff, and she it just irritated her so much. Yeah. She's like, I'm done with this. Yeah, it doesn't really irritate me too much, because I can usually fill in my gaps if somebody cancels on me. I've got something else to, to fill that void mm -hmm. with real estate, especially, because I can like, okay, I've got my, my computer here, I've got my phone, I can reach out to a few people, so it that doesn't bother me yeah. so much. So, do you bike on the streets though? No, no, okay. No, I had a a bike at one point, and traffic scares me. Yes, well, <laughs> some of those bikers scare me. Yeah, uh, we'll be driving down the street, and they'll be like, and I know, I understand what they're doing. I'm not gonna, yeah. I don't try to, I don't try to also drive too close. So as right. soon as, but there's. There are some dangerous roads at times. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I'm like, mm, can you move over? <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Choose a different path. Yeah, I know. I that's the traffic just scared me too much. So no, I don't. I, I actually sold my road bike. <laughs> <laughs> Which I don't blame you. Yeah. I mean, uh, the way it's about ten years ago, I think, is about when it started taking off here in Indiana, and it just blew yeah. up. It's basically the way pickleball's blown up lately right. here. Uh, and you probably see a lot of that with your. That's what you need to sponsor is pickleball. Courts. Pickleball. <laughs> <laughs> I've never played, but I, everybody says, oh, you need to. No, so maybe hey, I will one day. Just, just go out to a court, put up a sign. <laughs> hey, you want to talk real estate? There I'm, you go. I'm certified I'm for your girl. seniors. <laughs> <laughs> they'll, just, they'll talk to you while they're not having to play. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but what was it? Uh, I, I brought my kids in during the summer last year, and they put a new park over here in Carmel. And I'm like, well, I'll take them over there for lunch, and they can go up and play. The board, they had a board with names. There was a long line. Pickleball court was filled with all really? like, wow, this is what retirement looks like nowadays. Yeah. No, it's great, though. I yeah. love it. No, no. it, it yeah. I think 
one thing that I think COVID did to everybody is is like you enjoy when you can go out and do stuff and right. be with people uh, because being locked in your house is not fun. No. <laughs> <laughs> you can't even go. They didn't want you to go to the grocery store. So you're like, oh, really? can't do anything. <laughs> uh, but now, especially with the elderly, I mean, they can get out there and see their friends. They can go be, be active. And right. that's the biggest thing is being active at their mm-hmm. age. Uh, exactly. Because let's be honest, uh, my parents are not the best of it. And the, hopefully they're not listening to this, but they're not as active since they retired uh, yeah. and I try to get them to be more, Hey, go out, but they're not really sports people and stuff like I am, uh, which is weird, but it's the way it works. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So we'll get back a little bit more on the real estate side. Okay. All right. So where, uh, how do you, I know you market for the senior citizens mm-hmm. and everything. So do you use a CRM? Do you put them in there to follow up with them constantly? How do you keep base with everybody? So, I mean, I do have a, a database and a spreadsheet of, of people that are, is your sphere, my sphere. Um, I do social media. I'm in front of them a lot. And I think that that's the biggest thing is I'm in front of them a lot. And, and these different events that I do um, help me to just, they re, they recognize me. They're like, oh, there's Lori. You know, what you got for us today? I I give away a lot of promo items so chip clips and um, magnets that go on the refrigerator and um, bags and notepads and you know all the all the little trinkets that they love to to pick up and and keep so oh where's the good stuff the cookies the candy (laughs) (laughs) i have a little of that too (laughs) oh okay (laughs) Uh, so when you mention social media where is it mostly facebook is it so facebook and instagram mostly i do linkedin sometimes but honestly i'm i'm more on facebook than i am anything else uh so we're not going to see your dance moves and all that stuff. You know, I I will uh, do that occasionally with my daughter. <laughs> She's on the TikTok thing, and we'll occasionally do one of those dances. But that was I no, <laughs> that's not my thing. I'll do video and things like that for my listings and just things things like that. But so, uh, how old is your daughter? She's 18. Okay. So has she thought about doing real estate or what's she thinking? So she's actually in cosmetology, gra- going to be graduating from that this year as well as that's awesome. Oh, oh, also from high school so she's doing both at the same time and so she'll graduate from both of them in may and uh, real estate she started being my uh, assistant so she's helping me out a few hours a week not very not very much but it's not it's not her first choice but it may be a second yep. or third <laughs> it is interesting how many kids uh now she didn't grow up with you doing it the whole time no. but you we watch it and they're like no i hate real estate yeah i'm never going to do it my parents were always going. she hates that i'm on the phone all the time she's oh. she's like you are always on your phone i'm like i know <laughs> but in about 10 years she'll be like mm, maybe i should do this real estate right. thing so it is yeah. interesting how many come back to it and it's like oh that was the right job i just had to go try something different to realize it yeah um yeah. so is that your only kid or? no i've got my son is 25 and he is an hvac and um i've got a daughter-in-law now so he just got recently married in last september so oh, wow congrats um, yeah so i've gained another daughter which is great <laughs> and uh yeah so he does hvac and so I I think that you know he's started doing some stuff on the side so it's going to work out that I can you know obviously maybe refer some business to him too. No no no. So what what I really heard was hey look if you're looking at selling a home or buying a home you need an HVAC guy she knows a guy. I got a guy. <laughs> <laughs> that makes it nice and easy. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So um has did he think about doing real estate or is no. he completely he, he no. loves what he does yeah he really loves what he does and he's he does plumbing too but mostly hvac is what he what his love is and so yeah he does he does that and that's, he's good at it that's good i mean and you still need the uh the trades guys yeah uh and not to mention and that's the one thing i think the our industry or our whole society has lost uh lost uh, in there is like go go to college you can go do this well you still need a guy to uh, do some work around your house you still yeah. need a plumber you still need an electrician right. exactly uh, so that's what my kids are young so I've talked briefly talked about but I don't push them any 
particular way, but right. I'm like, there's multiple options. Trades, Lots you can make a good job. Uh, Absolutely. As Mike Rowe would say. <laughs> yep. Uh, if that's dirty jobs guy, if nobody knows. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes I throw out references. All right. So I'm going to ask Rick's favorite question. Rick's favorite question. Yep. Okay. What's your superpower? I feel like that I can connect with people. Um, I'm, I feel like I'm approachable, that I'm likable, and most people find me very trustworthy too. No, you're not. No, it's <laughs> <laughs> no. So people that you know, like, and trust you, you will do business with. And so that's what I try to be. And, th and that's huge, especially in real estate, because let's be honest, the house more or less for most people is the biggest investment or yeah. purchase you're going to make your whole entire life. So if you don't trust that person, something's wrong. Right. So, and let's be honest though, most times, you don't know too many people when you're looking at selling or buying, uh, working with them. You may know them a few weeks before the process even gets going. Right. Uh, so to be able to get people to trust you quickly is a huge, pro a huge issue to get. Yeah. Over. And I, you know, I usually just tell them, you know, my story and, and, you know, that I was a nurse before I did this and, and yep. just kind of tell them my thing. And they're like, oh, wow, that's kind of cool. And then we usually find a connection. Somebody knows a nurse somewhere in their life. <laughs> no, no, nobody knows nurses. <laughs> so uh, I mentioned to ask you this question earlier. Mm -hmm. So I saw your little logo. Yeah. Uh, let's talk about this. So describe your logo. So people who are not watching this cannot because they can't yeah. see it. So it's got my name in cursive, Lori Blythe. And then at the top, it's got a, a heartbeat that you would see on a, on an EKG, mm -hmm. and it's normal sinus rhythm. But at the very end, there's a little like house at the end of that normal sinus rhythm beat, and then underneath of it, it says the real estate nurse. Yep, and what that really tells you is, guess what? It's not a straight line, so you're still living. Let's go buy a house. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. <laughs> a new tagline. So I always um, add to that, you know, I'm the realtor who truly cares mm -hmm. for her clients. So that I mean, and that's awesome, especially yeah. coming from your background. Yeah. Uh, I saw that and I was like, oh, that's awesome. Uh -huh. <laughs> so great job on whoever marketed that to you. Or if you thought of it on your own, great job. I didn't think of it on my own. Oh, kind of did. I actually was working with um, a logo person who helped me design it. And she just sort of jumped into my brain and and pulled it out and she came up with exactly what it was what i was like thinking so yeah yeah you got to have artistic people yeah. sometimes because i'm not one of them yeah <laughs> uh, <laughs> so if somebody's listening to this and they have uh, questions about real estate or possibly moving their parents to a different facility or whatever they got what's the best way they can get in touch with you the best way is by phone you can call me or text me at 317-501-2298 I also have email, which is Lori at the Stuart Home Group .com. All right. So now we'll get into the question of the week and kind of curious on this one. Mm -hmm. What was your first car? My first car was a two toned blue Caprice Classic. OK. And it was my memories? grandpa. It was my grandpa's car and he <laughs> sold it to me. And uh, it was my very first loan that I ever had because they wanted me to help, you know, build my credit mm -hmm. or whatever. Um, my second car, however, was a white Cadillac that was longer than a building <laughs> and it had a shock that was broke on it. And we called it the land yacht because it was like really bouncy. <laughs> yep. Yeah. <laughs> Most people don't realize once the shocks will still somewhat work, but what happens is they lose the ability to hold up. So yeah. what, when you hit a bump, oh, it just it, it just, just keeps, keeps going. going. So if you hit, if you go down a bumpy road, you will be bouncing for a while. Right, right, yeah. <laughs> uh, but it's good that uh, your your grandparent wanted you not just to do the loan. Uh, but it builds that you're helping pay for the car. Yeah. So it builds more of a sense of responsibility that you're going to help take care of this car right. instead of, let's be honest, we all have kids. We give them something and, oh, they love it for a couple of seconds. And then next thing you know, it's destroyed. Right. <laughs> so yeah. good job, parent, yeah. grandparents. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So what do you drive now? Right now I drive a Toyota 4Runner. So um, I've got a kind of a cool story. I, this is my second 4Runner that I've owned. It's, I bought this one just last year. It's new. The other one that I brought bought was new also in 2004. 
still have it and it's got 365,000 miles on yes, it. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> You're never going to, you can't sell me on Toyota because I've been sold for a long I time. I love them. <laughs> uh, mine uh, right now is I have 160K on it and I'm going to knock on wood, but yeah. barely had to do any maintenance besides regular oil changes and yeah. stuff. I got a couple little things here and there, but nothing outrageous and yep. it just keeps going. I want to keep it till my son can drive. I don't know if mentally I'll be able to do that. 365,000 <laughs> miles, maybe. <laughs> no, no, no. The car will last. Yeah. Mentally, I always <laughs> like, man, do, I, I, <laughs> do I want a new car? I want a new car. I want it, I want this or something. So that's where I'm at. Yeah. But I was like, well, maybe I'll just get one a, a different, because my, my daughter's obsessed with Wranglers. Uh -huh. And I would like one or a Gladiator, sure. which is the Wrangler truck. Uh, but, and I was like, well, maybe I'll just do that and just use that on the weekends and it still drive the Toyota throughout the week. Okay. And I was like, that, that'll make it last longer. And then I could just give it and it'd be cheaper than having to do anything else. Right. <laughs> uh, <Yep. laughs> so, um, you I know you're married. Mm -hmm. So what does your husband do? He works at Mart Marietta, which is a gravel pit and he's worked there for almost 40 years. So not very long, not very long. <laughs> <laughs> he is, uh, I think, counting down the days to retirement. But uh, no, he he's worked there for a lot of years. <laughs> so as soon as he retires, you're gonna be like, all right, now you work for me. You're my assistant. So he's he actually does a little bit to help me out, you know, with signs and stuff like that. So yeah, I okay. mean, he might he, I might put him to work a little bit more. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, nothing more than working at the house, you know? Yeah. Hey, go put these signs out, take some pictures. Let's go. <laughs> yeah, no, we also um, have, um, my father-in-law has a 125-acre farm that we also do. And oh, so wow. That keeps him pretty busy. Where's that at? It's in Monrovia. It's in Monrovia. Wow. Mm -hmm. You're a whole family just yeah. there. So yeah. you, can you even walk around town without people not knowing who you are? I know a lot of people. <laughs> <laughs> It's great. <laughs> it's good for you, though. Yeah. Um, so let's get into this. So do you, after you sell a home, or do, do you consistently do follow-up with people? or yeah. And how does that look? Yeah, so I um, obviously send out, like, calendars every year and, you know, that everybody puts on their on their refrigerators, the Colts magnets and things like that. But I also still do keep in contact with people um, just to see how they're doing, especially my elderly folks mm -hmm. too, because um, I, there's one that I moved into a nursing home and, and so I go and visit her every so often and um, just to check up on them and just to see that they're doing okay. Um, yeah, just keeping in touch. Yep. I bet you they love that. Oh yeah. I mean, they do. Just, I usually take them treats. <laughs> <laughs> oh, darn. <laughs> so I got a, a corny joke, but do you keep up with the, do you call the people with dementia a little uh, more often? Do you call them like once a week? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Just want to let you know. Yeah. I haven't talked to you forever. <laughs> uh, yeah. That's one of those, uh, what is that movie? 50 Dates with Adam Sandler or something like that? With I, Drew Barrymore, oh, yeah, where she loses her memory every night. Oh, I think I've dates. heard of it. I don't think I've seen it though. Oh, come on! <laughs> so movies, I like to watch them, except that you know the first fifteen or twenty minutes. If I sit down, I'm usually asleep. <laughs> That's my wife. We do movie night every other Friday, and she'll be like completely yeah. like, "Oh, maybe we're watching." It. Why does it matter? You're going to fall asleep, right? You, you wake up the next day, and you're like, "How'd that end?" <laughs> <laughs> oh, I wasn't interested in none of the movies. <laughs> but hey, to each their own. Right. <laughs> you kids enjoy it because we get candy and popcorn. So, <laughs> all right. So, um, so what are you looking for towards the future? I know, I know you started late in the career, mm -hmm. but what are you looking to start your own team? I'm not. She's not leaving the Stewart Home Group right now, <laughs> but uh, maybe yeah. possibly. Or are you just looking to just do what you're doing? And no, just... I, I I I just want to continue doing what I'm doing. Um, no lofty goals of of having my own brokerage brokerage or anything like that. Um, I just want to continue being me and doing help servicing or help service the community that I am in. I've been asked to grow a team. I'm really just not interested in that. Um, I just want to, I just want to do me. Yep. It's a lot more stress at a certain yeah. time. Like if you were 19, 20, I'd be like, all right, now, now that yeah. might be different. But once you get to, you're just like, 
I just don't want to deal with it. Yeah. It's easy. It's, it's easier just to do it this way. It's part of the reason why when I was looking for brokerages, I knew what I didn't want. And, and that's what I just didn't want. I don't, I don't want to have to be on a team or have to be a team. I just want to be able to be me. Yep. And you don't have to babysit. Your yeah. kids are out. You don't have to worry <laughs> about them anymore. You don't want, you don't want more kids. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Any pets? No pets. You know, it's funny. We had pets before we had kids, but, um, when my last pet got hit by a car, it just was too much to mm. deal with. And so we don't. But I have a grand dog now. Oh, <laughs> what type? Do you know, it, it's a lab. It's a lab. Mm -hmm. OK. Uh, yeah. Our family was like, you can't go any like if you get dogs or yeah. I mean, I'm a cat person anyways, but uh, my wife is not. So yeah. we get nothing. Uh, we got fish and then we had a frog for a little while. Yeah. But you can fish, you can feed them, you can go on vacation, come back, feed them again. Yeah, but they die really fast. Though, yeah, too. At, at times, <laughs> We've yes. We've had fish uh, over the years, too, and they usually die. <laughs> uh, but it's like, oh, we got to go here, we got to go there. Oh, we got to go home and let the dog out. We got to go. I'm like, that's just too much. Right. So I'm with you on the no pet right now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, all right. So let's go into more of the what are you looking to do? Uh, are you going to plan on doing real estate the whole entire time or are you going to retire at one point in time or are you just going to say, hey, look, I'll still be here for you even yeah. after I retire? You know, I think that's kind of where I'm going to be. I don't know because it doesn't feel like a job, yeah. really. Um, I'm just helping people. And so I don't see myself stopping to retire just because I you know, I don't know. I just feel like that I'll probably do this for as long as I'm able. Yeah. I mean. It's not that stressful. It's a stressful job, but it's not overwhelming nine to five, right. nine to six every single day. You can make it what you want Correct. it to be. I mean, if you want to be busy, you can be busy, yep. very busy. And if you need to be laid back, you can do that too. Yep. And the nice thing is, is what uh, Rick and I talk with people about is, it's one of those jobs is once you do it for so long, then you start getting referrals. So you're not having to cold call a bunch of people right. and all that other stuff. You just get referrals and let's get honest. Once you get old enough, that might be just good enough where exactly. people just call you, hey, I'm ready to sell my home. All right, let's go do this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so. I love stories, and we've all made mistakes, and oh boy. <laughs> we all learn from mistakes. I mean, we all have all had new jobs. So is there something you did when you first got in the business that you're like, man, I should never have done that? Yeah. <laughs> I, um, I, it was my very first listing, as a matter of fact, and uh, I got multiple offers on it, and one of the offers was five thousand dollars above the list price and uh, that was before multiple offers was really a thing it was just a very um unique situation yeah so <clears throat> she the the agent uh I, I put in a listing that washer and dryer does not stay so in the purchase agreement we looked it over and she snuck in washer and dryer in the that it was going to be going with and so i didn't notice it until after we already signed and i i went back to my seller and i was like i think i i think i overlooked this and i said i just want to let you know do, are you okay with letting this washer and dryer go well she of course they weren't because it was brand new they really wanted that washer and dryer so i went to the agent and said um does your buyer absolutely have to have that washer and dryer? And she started laughing at me. And she was like, ha, 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 you missed that, didn't you? I guess you're buying them a washer and dryer. So I bought them a washer and dryer. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's one of those things. Yeah. That, uh, I always look at that now. <laughs> yes. Hey, nobody likes making mistakes. But yeah. I will say this right now. The quickest way to learn is by making a mistake. and Because you'll never make that mistake ever again and in I your life. I have it. <laughs> <laughs> but it's just one of those things like we've had uh last week somebody was like yeah i went and wrote down the wrong number uh they were selling a couple units at, at this place they wrote down the wrong unit oops and it's like yeah so it was out and like, so they had to do addendum and all sure. that stuff but it's like 
things you just don't think about and you're just going through the motion yeah. and then uh but that's the nice thing with the Stuart home group is uh, we've had a couple of you guys on there mm-hmm. that they'll they go through the contracts with you guys and yes let's be honest we all make mistakes yeah. but they go through it with you guys and it's like hey this is this this yeah. is this keep an eye out on this that type of stuff but we still all right <laughs> yeah there's always we always yeah there's we're human right yes <laughs> uh but th- both people liked it. They got their washer dryer and yeah. uh, they got their new washer dryer courtesy of you. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, so is there any good stories, uh, good transaction that you've had? I've had a lot of great transactions. All right. Let's hear a good story. So, um, well, I've been probably, gosh, I don't even know which one to choose, but um, I'm going to go with my first million dollar listing that my client came to me. She actually was a a spin class participant and came to me and I didn't know that she lived in the house that she lived in. And uh, when she reached out to me, I was like, oh yeah, go ahead and give me your address. And she was like, oh, I thought you knew where I live. And no, I don't. Um, So anyway, I went to her house. I was like, oh, (laughs) this is where you live. Um, Anyway, beautiful house. And so I listed that. And so that was my first million dollar listing. And uh, before we sold it, we, I helped them buy, um, another yeah house that was that much or more. <laughs> yeah, I mean, normally people stay in that realm. So yeah, congrats. <laughs> yeah, so so that was that was pretty cool. That uh, I I had no idea that she lived in a in a house like that, um, and it was just I was very honored that she chose me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. So I know. You're you're not from the whole Indianapolis area, so I'm kind of curious. When somebody comes to visit you in your place, what type of restaurant you go to there? What's your favorite? Uh, Lori's Kitchen. <laughs> 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 I don't eat out a lot, um, so I, I guess if we're, if we're going to do anything eating out, I usually choose one of the local Mexican restaurants. Um, but I really like to cook and eat at home or, or have my husband he likes to grill and and smoke meat and so um we'll do something like that but i like just our home cooked food <laughs> so what's your favorite thing to make at home my favorite thing i i like a lot of different things but um i really love my husband's brisket that he smokes on okay, the, yep. on the smoker so that's it, pretty good if you have not had him smoked like that mm-hmm. it, you don't realize cuz I don't have a smoker right now. I don't have the time with two yeah. young kids, but my neighbor does. And so he'll send That's some over. So oh my goodness. It is a game changer. Yeah. So yeah. if you have the opportunity, do it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's so good. <laughs> All right, Lori. So if somebody's listening to this and they want to come to your house for some smoked brisket, <laughs> what's, what's the best way to get a hold of you? So they can call me or text me at 317-501-2298. They can also find me on social media. I'm on Facebook and Instagram, and I'm also uh, have an email address, Lori at the Stuart Home Group dot com. All right, and to get a hold of Rick or I, just go to hardworkingmortgageguys dot com. That is hardworkingmortgageguys dot com. Uh, Lori, thank you for joining us on our show. It's thank been a you. pleasure having you on. And Thanks for I, inviting me. I'd like to have you and and see see how your career continues taking off. Yeah, uh, and see how everybody just loves you. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Uh, thank you. Grant NMLS number 33041. Grant NMLS number 664589. Ian Arnold NMLS number 1995469. Equal housing opportunity. Some restrictions apply.